There's no place for this in your worksheets, but we're still working on 513. Specifically, we're going to look at cotangent theta. Uh, now, cotangent theta is one thing I know about cotangent theta. It is the inverse of y equals tangent theta. And so if I were to look at the original function, I would recognize that uh, tangent has an unusual period. Again, it stops at pi instead of 2 pi. So it's going to be starting at 0. I'm going to go up towards this. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Hold on. I want to do a dashed line because I'm graphing cotangent, not tangent. So it goes like this. And then an asymptote through here. And then hooks back into here. Now we use the same reason we used before. Where tangent 0, 1 over 0 is going to be an asymptote, right? So I'm going to go ahead and graph an asymptote. And where it's an asymptote, this is weird. Asymptotes are some number of 0. So when you flip them, it becomes 0 over some number of 0, right? So therefore, where tangent has an asymptote, cotangent is going to have a 0 or a point right here, right? And then where tangent is zero, we're going to have an asymptote again. And the last bit of reasoning has to be this. It has to be, okay, well, if tangent is positive, tangent's positive, then am I starting at positive infinity or negative infinity? One over a positive number is still going to be a positive number, right? So it has to come down like this, hooks into here, and then goes like this. Now you have two options at this point. You can remember what your cotangent graph is. Okay? So you can remember this like a parent function and then do cotangent graphs just like you've been doing previous graphs. Not a problem at all. The other option is to go ahead and do it the way I just described it, which is you do your tangent graph and then you treat it like a cosecant or secant by making zeros equal to uh, asymptotes and to make asymptotes equal to zero. Okay? All right. So with that in mind, you should try problem number six. Try problem number six. When you're done trying problem number six, you should uh, click the video back on. I'll do problem number six with you. All right, so we're going to graph the cotangent. So I hope you've tried it before. You're going to try it. Turn this back off. Try it and then come back. All right, so I'm going to look at this. I'm going to graph y equals tangent uh, first. And then I'm going to have a period which is going to be pi over one half, right? Because omega would be one half. So that's going to give me two pi. And then I'm going to have a phase shift of negative, negative pi over two over one half. If I flip and multiply, that gives me negative pi over two times two over one, which is negative pi. At the end of the day, I'm going to also have, I'm going to do a vertical shift of negative 2. All right. So I start this problem off. I'm looking at a tangent graph. I know the tangent graph does this. I'm going to do this fairly lightly. And I'm sketching it in, right? Goes to infinity. And it starts at negative infinity, goes into pi, and stops. We're all good. Okay. So now my period is going to be pi instead. So instead of doing that, I'm going to do it at pi. So I'm going to scroll this up. I'm going to go like this. And it's going to look like this instead, right, as I go into pi. Now, phase shift of negative pi means instead of, I'm going to move everything pi over to the left. So I'm going to move this point here to here. I'm going to move this point with an asymptote. I'm going to move my asymptote to the middle. I'm going to move this point here to here, right? So my graph ultimately ends up looking like this. And back down here in the middle. And then back into here. And then last but not least, it says I'm going to drop the whole thing too. Now, dropping infinity down to is kind of a waste of time. Dropping negative infinity down to is also a waste of time. But zero becomes negative two. And then it's going to go up to a positive infinity. And then it's going to swing down, starting at negative infinity, it's going to swing into 2. Sorry, negative 2. And then it's going to go up. There's an asymptote here. And back in like this. Up, oh, back in like this to 2, right? That should be my final part. That part shouldn't be. And then, uh, actually, you know what? I'll just clean that up. So... 
So I'm coming in from negative infinity and I'm going to negative two, right? That's my stopping point. Okay, put an arrow there, put an arrow here. And then going backwards in time, this is going to plunge down to Uh oh, my period is 2 pi, so I messed this up. I did a full cycle by 3 pi over 2. Let's fix this. This is a terrible mess. Okay, backing up. Okay, now, <clears throat> what did I mess up? Well, I'm supposed to go through a full cycle by pi over 2, right? So I'm now going to go. Um, so I've got this first part right. So it's starting at negative 2, and I'm going up to infinity. And this should have been down here into negative 2, right? But I finished my cycle every 2 pi, right? So this is so my first asymptote's here. My next asymptote would be a 2 pi. So that's the way that would look. And then I'd have the same thing on the back end. I'd have this going down to negative 2 pi, and that would be the end of my graph. All righty then. Okay, so there is your y equals cotangent, theta over 2, minus pi over 2, minus 2 graph. All right? All righty then.